Okay guys, this is a direct TV receiver and it is the model HR24 and I've had problems with it recently for a few months where it oddly refuses to play some shows and it skips and acts like it won't play it back even though it says it's recorded the full hour or two hour show that it is as soon as you hit play the screen kind of goes black and it just hesitates and then it may pause for five or ten seconds and then it asks you do you want to delete the recording and your only option and you can say no but it just does the same thing over and over and if you hit yes of course it deletes it and, and it works and I my suspicion is one of two things. It's either a bad main board heading south due to overheating but or just getting aged. Um, but I did verify the fan is working correctly. It blows air. It starts out high when you plug it in and it calms down to a normal just an idle speed. And my, the room it's in is, is air conditioned. And so it's either going to be a bad main board or ba main board going south or it's going to be the hard drive. So I thought, okay, well, let me salvage this by replacing the hard drive, and at the same time, I'll upgrade it from a 500 to a one terabyte drive. And I couldn't really find any documentation on exactly how to remove the cover, except that that the cover was problematic for removal. I found a video of someone with a special made factory jig that removed the cover in one one press. So I this is. This is just, I'm doing this for the very first time. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to see if I can find the right uh, tools here to get this cover to slide off. And it looks like there's two, it looks like there's two plastic keepers here that are spring, kind of uh, spring loaded, if you will. Plastic spring loaded. And maybe one of the first things I'll do is remove the card. I don't know if that card will be in the way of sliding the case off, so I'll just remove the card. Uh, okay, so it looks like there's some uh, some plastic keepers right here. Okay, so right here there's definitely a tab here that's keeping it in place, and it looks like it has to be it looks like it has to come out quite a ways. Um, I've got to see if I can uh, get a tool in there that'll maybe a maybe a bit that can just stay wedged in there. Let's get a, a bit there, maybe possibly just wedged in there to hold that tab out. Looks like it's just about got it. So I wedge that bit in there. And I think this is going to be the same. Yes, it is. Let's see how many bits I have here. Okay, so see how see if this camera can get it here. the camera is blocking my ability to get the, oh, there you go. You see that create that little bit of a gap there. And the same over here. Just wedge that and the tab down in there. Right there. Just need to get keep it keep that gap open. And I will do the same on the reverse side. Now these front 
different ones. They don't look too hard. This time I will flip it upside down. Let's see if this helps me. So the case is lifted off of those plastic keepers. And I don't need the wedges anymore. And next I have to see what's going to hinge open. Or what here? Let's see if I can I'm just kind of gently pry this apart. Let's see what else gets caught in the process. So that was causing some grief there. I need to get that wedge in there. Maybe even two. Here a little bit. I'm holding it with my fingers open so it won't close shut again. It looks like it's maybe going to get me in here. Okay, so now I've pried it even further, hinging it from the front. And I don't feel any unusual pressures. See down in there. Hinging it, I do see a screw there that there's no way to get to the screw until you remove it completely. Those screws there, it really should just lift off, and I'm probably just timid about it. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, I think that's the answer. Is don't be timid. I'm not sure what's keeping that on. Here we go. Okay, so I just had to put a little outward pressure on this piece right here. Again, I wasn't doing, I'm not doing things very forcefully, just enough to negotiate the plastic off. So there we go. Okay, so really it's, um, It really is uh, some tabs that we're holding it on, as you can see here. So these tabs are spring-loaded. One, two, three, four. And then the other, so those are the four you want to get those, maybe some screw bits or wedge, some kind of something to wedge that. And the other two are these two to release it. And once these are released, you can start opening it like a like a door, like a hinged door. Okay, so that's the cover off. Now, and I did not damage or stress any of the other plastics when I did that. Everything um, looks good. Okay, so there's the inside. Pretty much no dust. I mean, there's a little tiny layer of dust on here, but I, I was thinking it would need a compressor to blow out dust, like most computer 
chassis do, but this one's fine. Uh, this is looks like all the capacitors are fine in here. And I don't see anything, any signs of anything burnt or melting or anything. That power supply. There's the main board. And again, everything looks good physically. And okay, so now we'll just go right after the hard drive. And. Looks like there is uh, four Torx screws. One, two, three, four that hold this support cover on. So now. Let's see if I have a security bit set. That'll match that. Here we go. This is a probably a nine dollar set from Harbor Freight. And we'll just guess start with this T ten, which has the security hole in the center. And put that on here. Do this one first. Actually, it doesn't have the security portion on the uh, screw itself. But that is the right size, a T10. Let me remove these other bits here, they're in the way. Loosen that. Loosen that. These bits aren't magnetic, so it's not picking up the, uh, the screw head. And somewhere here I have a magnetic pickup tool. If that will. And can't get that out. Not magnetic, okay. See if I can grab it with the screwdriver. And it all fell apart. Oh man. Okay, we'll get some uh, needle nose pliers here. Grab that screw. There's that screw right there. You can see that. Okay, and the fourth one. Got it here. Okay, four screws out. Cover. Let's take the cover off. I'm not sure you guys can see this. Okay, I'm just going to lift it straight up. Okay, notice on the this side the fan is built into the hard drive encasement. It's all one unit. So that means this uh, colored 
wire connector is for the fan. So now I will I will take that off as well. Okay, what I'm going to do is use these. Uh, so I can, I'm sure you can see that. Use these pliers here. Squeeze that connector. Just get it started, and then my finger should go to pull it up. There we go. That connector's off. And now I can lift up this assembly. And we have the data cable here with the met metal clip keeper comes off and the power connector. Okay, so there we go. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so they got this, um, and I'm looking on the main board to see how that attaches there. And it looks like those. So the these two clips here are just for grounding, and you can see right there that that's where they're making contact with the chassis. Okay, those got to come out to go on the new hard drive. And here's my new hard drive. Let's make sure we have screw holes for those points. Yes, we do. All right. Okay, let's get another screw going here. Now, from what I've read, everything exists on the main board. And when you put in a blank hard drive, it's supposed to detect that it's blank and initialize it and put the OS on there. And then it's like everything's like factory fresh at that point. What I'm not trying to do here is copy and mimic what I currently have on this drive onto the new drive. I'm just going to start with a clean slate. I, I read about places where there were some tricks you could do to get it, the system to like defrag the existing files on the drive to make your system feel like new. My assumption here was that this drive was headed south which was causing some of the hesitation and so I thought well instead of troubleshooting it why don't I just my, my, my troubleshooting is going to be my my hard drive replacement. So if I put the new hard drive in, turn it on, initialize everything, it's a brand new unit and I got problems with it then I know it's 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 going to be mainboard at that point. Okay. Okay, let's see how those rubber grommets affect this drive. Okay. Oh, it's got a piece of foam in there, but really, it's actually not needed. I mean, it would change the air flow around it. I'd rather have it air flow freely over top and bottom. It's almost like this was in here to act as a cushion, which becomes pointless once you have the screws mounted in there. Now, it could have been used as an as a helper to get your screw holes aligned. I'm not I'm gonna leave it out on the replacement drive. Okay, so this is a a uh, five hundred gig Seagate which is my favorite brand. It's used a lot with the Dell Enterprise equipment and for their enterprise drives, that brand anyway. Uh, they do use the other a few other brands but that seems to be the most popular and of course you know once you get into the SATA drives, the Dell's warranty uh, becomes less. So that's so much for SATA. And I was trying to look for a manufacturer. Okay, DOM is date of 
manufacturer. Ah, can you see that on the camera? Date of manufacturer. Right there. It says 06 of 12. Which I thought this unit would have been older than that. Okay. So 500 gigs out with the old, in with the new, and do the manufacturer on this Seagate. Let's see if I can find it here. 14. Oh man, I'm only two years newer, but this drive has very little actual running time on it. I used it for a desktop computer for a little while, but minimal use, minimal on time. Okay, now, uh, oh, this was this way, and I will mount it as such. Get that first screw, screw started. Line that hole there. Started next one. Let's see what we're at here. There it is. Okay, get to the other side. Okay. I'm just I'm not cranking this down, I'm just making them barely finger tight. And it seems to kind of grip. Okay. Back in place. And should I clean this fan? I don't know. I can maybe just give it a quick wipe down with my finger. Okay. Blow up the chassis a little bit. Again, this thing wasn't bad. I was I was shocked it wasn't really. I, 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 no dust bunnies in here. I was shocked. Okay, reverse the process now, and bring this back up here, and. Place it in there. Oh, let's get the uh, cables in place. Okay, maybe let me put the data first and the power. Maybe that'll help me out here. Figure out what's going on. Okay, that clips in place. And then the power. There it goes. Okay, I don't know why that that is tight tolerance. All right, now get the holes lined up. I'm just gonna see if I can leave those connectors detached. Flip it upside down, and I will put it on this side after I get the screws in position. Okay, one. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna notice that when I'm doing it wrong the first time, but oh well. Thank you. And I'm just gonna make sure there's not any contacts on that PC board that'll hit that metal. Which I don't think 
there is, but maybe I will... Let me see if I want to put a piece of tape there to protect it. I think it's all good on that PC board. Okay, now let's snug these in place. Okay. Now, put them back in place. Now I can feel a little bit of that springy in this tension by about a millimeter or so. Now we go back with all the screws. Okay, plug that power fan back in. Power connector, get these cables and their holders. Okay, so now I will not video the whole boot up process and setup. That's probably a whole other video that just not necessary. But that's it. So um, I don't know how much editing I'm going to do on this video. I just want to throw it out there so it's available, and you'll have to. I do apologize that it's not edited down to two minutes of how to do it. But I, I, sometimes I just do the raw video because I don't have time to do all the edits. Hope this benefits you guys, and uh, good luck.